All right, hello everyone and welcome to another Anthem live stream. We're very excited to have all of you join us today. We have some very exciting topics to talk through, but first of all, we should introduce our guest. So we're gonna dial in our Edmonton studio where we have Emily Taylor joining us today as our guest player. Hey Emily, how's it going? Hey there, it's going great, how are you? Good, good. Hey, just to kick us off, why don't you explain to our amazing fans who have tuned in today, um, who you are and what you do for Anthem. Thanks. Uh, my name is Emily Taylor. I've been in the game industry about almost 12 years now, and I've been with Bioware for about a year and a half. I've been working on Anthem the last year, and I've been specializing in the area of agent quests. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Emily. Um, in terms of agenda for today, for those of you who don't follow our every tweet with bated breaths, shame on you, you should be doing that. Uh, but in case you're not following, um, today we're going to look at a legendary contract and we'll explain what that means. Uh, we did a poll in the last week of which perspective people wanted to see today and the vote was incredibly close, but uh, Ranger won. So we're going to play as a Ranger today uh, with a spark beam uh, as requested and a few other weapons we'll talk about as we get there. Um, community also requested we show some keyboard and mouse control. So I'll be playing that today with keyboard and mouse. Uh, for better or for worse for all of us um, and outside of that um, that's kind of the main agenda and then anything else that comes up uh, we'll be answering your questions um, before we dive in and have Emily kind of explain what some of those things were um, all the regular disclaimers exist um, and we remember to say it this time uh, you know the game while very close to being finished isn't finished yet we might see some bugs we might even see a crash uh, if we do we'll just roll with the punches and keep going and keep talking about what we need to talk about but just keep in mind that the game still isn't finished um, if you all have questions please type them in chat um, uh, jesse is on hand to pull questions out and read them out to us uh, we're going to do our best to play and talk so we'll see how that goes so that's all the, the opening stuff uh, i see someone throwing flares in the background a uh, good job uh, we also have two secret developers with us. Uh, we're going to do a full squad of four today, and we may, we may reveal who those two secret devs are later. Um, but for now, um, and you can see all them behind, we've got uh, a few friends here. Uh, but to kick us off, uh, Emily, why don't you explain... Uh, we'll, we'll get to what a legendary contract is, but they're given to you by agent. So maybe let's start with what is an agent in Anthem? Sure. Well, uh, as you know, there are several factions in Fort Tarsus and, in fact, in the world of Anthem. Uh, some of those are, for example, the Freelancers, the Sentinels, the Arcanists. We've met some of those in your previous live streams. When we were looking at adding more quests into the world, aside from the main storyline, uh, we could have just sort of sprinkled them around the fort, but we thought it would be more fun if you could do smaller quest lines so they could build up to a bit more meaning and help you get to know specific people. So we picked one person in each of the factions that we'll sort of focus on and who will give you those quests. So there are three uh, agents for the three factions I mentioned, freelancers, sentinels, and arcanists. I actually specialized in Agent Yarrow, who's the freelancer. Um, uh, today we're playing one of uh, Matthias, who's the arcanist, one of his contracts. And through their quest lines, you'll get to know not only a little bit about those people, but also their faction and what their factions stand for. Uh, when we talked about freelancers and what they are and what they do, we actually discussed sort of three pillars of what their behavior is. They're heroic, they're warriors, and they're explorers. And we also made the three factions and the three representatives of those factions sort of echo one of those three pillars. So uh, we hope that each faction will feel a little different, but that you'll explore what it means to be a freelancer through each of them. Awesome. That's great. Thank you. So at this point with Matthias, we've completed his main story. He's given us a regular contract we've completed, and now he's asked us to do a legendary contract. So exactly. uh, we put ourselves to level 30. Um, we kind of had have mid endgame gear. So, you know, a few epics and rares, uh, maybe a masterwork here or there. Um, mm -hmm. So what we might do is just jump into the action. There's several stages to a contract. We might just get through the first one and then take a little break and we can explain kind of what that was about and, and how, you know, the legendary contract system works. Sounds so if great. everybody is ready, we might start flying up. Uh, so some questions on keyboard and mouse with flight control. I think the team has made a lot of improvements. You can see the mouse movements aren't too crazy. It's pretty easy to get recentered. 
Um, I can show you guys some of the settings later if that is of interest. Uh, and team here, I can't hear the in-game sound. If we could turn that on, that would be oh, great. Hold on one second. Turn my head okay, <laughs> there we go. Turns out I turned my headphones off. So good. <laughs> All right, so a uh, little traversal is a warm up. Um, there's a lot of tricks with traversal, like uh, trying to skim the water to extend your flight time and looking for waterfalls out in the open. But as we're getting to our first destination, probably one of the questions, Emily, that, that at least comes up a lot in interviews is, you know, how did we try to design the world so that flight would be possible? So I don't know if you want to talk to that as we approach what looks like an Ursix. Oh gosh, um, actually I think that might be a better one for you to talk about. Um, <laughs> yep. I did not have much to do with designing the world, I just put the quests in it. So <laughs> I can tell you from that point of view we had a lot of fun making quests that work well with the verticality. Um, but I wasn't actually involved in the decisions of that. Sure, sure. So I know one of the things we talked about a lot was, uh, you know, in a game full of flight, how does every other part of the game make sense? You know, creature design, uh, all the way through to building the world and allowing traversal so that you just can't fly over everything. And one of what I think are the most impressive things is, you know, flight not only feels really amazing, but, you know, the, the, all the rest of the game, you know, plays well for it. Uh, I'm going to also show off right now one of the most requested abilities, which is this guy. Little spark beam. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Knocked out of the sky. <laughs> Um, so also on the weapon loadout, we had some questions about this from people. Um, we decided to go with a heavy pistol. So the thing with a heavy pistol is slow rate of fire, but if you can hit weak points, uh, the multiplier for weak point damage is much higher than um, other weapons. So we need to get uh, all these fragments. So we should probably just split up a little. Uh, you can see in the top right our objective. So this is, oh, I think I might actually already have one. Yeah, I'm just getting one now. Uh, so what we're doing, as you can see from the quest helper up at the corner there, is we've come across a Shaper Relic. Uh, these can be unearthed around the world of Anthem. They're obviously relics left over from the time of the Shapers, and they have fairly unpredictable effects. Uh, they can sometimes destabilize and throw off these fragments. Uh, when they're unstable, what they do is not only do they sort of summon uh, creatures, what creatures may vary at this it seems like it's, ah, Scorpidons, I'm just getting blown up by one. <laughs> Don't mind me. Um, uh, but also, in addition to the creatures that they summon normally, um, they are um, very valuable. Um, these are Shaper technology. Who knows what you can learn from them or make them do for you? Everyone is different. So different factions in Anthem are going to be really excited to get their hands on them. Like, that might be Dominions, that might be Scar, that's obviously us um, in this case. Matthias will often be very interested when he gets a report of uh, shaper, re pardon me, shaper relics in the world uh, because the Arcanists love to study these things to learn more about our world. Uh, so yeah, you will come across these in quests as well as in contracts. And uh, they do some unpredictable different things. Uh, but in this case, uh, as I mentioned, we have uh, scorpions and they've clearly attracted an Ursix as well. The, uh, the Ursix can also be attracted by the power of them. All right, so then you can see, okay, looks like we've got the last two, but normally yep. in the HUD, there is a UI element that's like a little compass or a radar, I'm not sure how you describe it, uh, that kind of shows you where the fragments are so that we can go pick them up and turn yeah. them Yeah. So we've got one more left to go, and then we probably have to defeat the Ursics anyway. Yeah, we uh, can see that's one of our objectives. Oh my god, I'm getting eaten by Scorpidon. <laughs> As a reference point, we're playing this at level 30 on hard, so... <laughs> this is uh, fairly hard, yeah. It's, uh, it's pretty hard. Uh, you've got to coordinate a little bit. <laughs> you doing okay? Yeah, we'll come yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm just going to hang out here. I think, oh, I have one. This is why we're not doing it, because talking and playing is not my strong suit. Okay. Yeah, yeah, once we get that last fragment in and restabilize it, the uh, most of the enemies should go away. Oop, just a couple left to clear out. I don't think the other six will go away though, so we might have to deal with them. Okay, can we do a little clean up here? Yeah. Where's my flame? 
flamethrower. All right. That was pretty fun. Yeah. Oh, we're not even okay. done yet. Okay, it's fine. I'm a little worried, but... <laughs> oh, I got to get my epic loot that's dropped on the ground for me. Awesome. Nice wind wall, Darren. Thank you. Oh. I just gave away who our third player is. <laughs> it's fine. Um, I also have a, a rally point here that increases weapon damage. I'm going to put this down here if anyone's interested. But this is 20% bonus uh, weapon damage, which is okay. pretty handy. It's one it's of the ranger's about. utilities. Uh, so the Ur6, uh, I think we might have shown it before on stream, but he, uh, if you hover, he'll throw big rocks at you and you have to kind of dodge in the air. Uh, or if you're on the ground, same thing. You know, dodging over is a way to avoid his attacks. Uh, he also leaps up for like a ground smash, so if you kind of double jump over and fly up, you can get out of that. Yeah, I'm running away like a gravit. Uh, okay, there's a health pack. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, stop that. No. Well, since you mentioned it was Darren joining us, I'll just say, because I know Darren and we've worked <laughs> together before, I love that I'm in the Colossus and he's not. He's, uh, I think, in an interceptor because in real life, it's kind of the opposite. Darren is approximately twice my biomass. <laughs> He's a really tall guy, so uh, I'm enjoying being the Colossus at this point, Darren. I just realized Kanban gave himself away. He's called Bio Kanban, which we haven't introduced <laughs> Kanban to uh, our broader audience yet, uh, but we can do that a bit later on. Awesome. All right, All so right. that was stage one of a legendary contract, and you were telling me uh, yesterday that uh, there are multiple stages and there's some variety in that. How does that work for the, the contracts in the game? Oh, can you guys yeah. not fly ahead, Oop. please? Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, let's uh, just take so... a little break, a sure. little pause. Let's see if I can get back in before I get teleported. Hey, Ben, we've, uh, we've got a request from our viewers. They're asking if you can fly as high as you can. Okay, I will do that. Emily, if you can explain contracts, uh, I will fly as high as I can so okay. we can see what happens. So uh, each faction, as I mentioned, is slightly different. They've got slightly different interests, which means they have also slightly different tasks in Fort Tarsus. So the freelancers are responsible for protecting people inside the fort and outside the fort, for example. Sentinels are more of the guards. Arcanists really need uh, the researchers, etc. So as you... Um, interact with the agents, you'll get quests that have a storyline, but you will also be able to help out with that faction's daily contracts. They're like the tasks that faction is responsible for in the fort. Uh, so depending on what agent you got the task from, what you're going to be asked to do will be a bit different. Uh, we also want the contracts to be constantly renewable content that even when you finished all of the story, uh, you can still keep doing them and they'll remain fresh. So they're going to be slightly different every time. Um, I don't want to call them repeatables because that has some negative connotations and we're doing it a little smarter than that but you won't be able to predict what exactly you're going to be able to do but you will know that it's related to that faction for example uh matthias as we've seen is very obsessed with uh fragments when they appear but he's got other arcanist related tasks uh, for agent yara you might be rescuing a strider or uh helping protect some arcanists or things like that yeah it's really cool even when we uh you know talk about most of the streams we do we kind of turn up and say we don't know exactly what's going to happen here <laughs> mm -hmm. and so there's a little bit of a randomness to it like we weren't expecting the ursix and now we have to silence this next shaper relic and it looks like the creatures are kind of pushing out to us so we might all dive in and get going but uh thanks okay. for the extra explanation yeah well this gives us an opportunity to show that uh that search radar that you're mentioning before because it's back on the screen oh yeah nice yeah, and you'll notice that it's got four quadrants and the strength of the signal gives you a clue how close you are, but also in the middle, it's a little harder to see probably on the live stream, but there's a little arrow. So there is verticality too, and we do have a very three-dimensional world, so definitely look at the arrow too. So you might be looking for something way up above you or below you. Right, like when I fly up now, the arrow says down, so I know to kind of go down. And when it's exactly. the dot, that means I'm on the right level, right? Exactly. There have been a couple of quests I've been flying in circles until I realized, oh, look, the arrow is down. It's actually below me. <laughs> All right. um, I didn't talk about my second ability you guys have been seeing, which is a sticky grenade. It's a grenade that does a lot of single target damage, so I'm kind of set up for single target damage. But when I throw it, it'll stick to the creature, the target, whatever, and then kind of blow up for a small AoE, but it's pretty, pretty high damage. 
All right, so we got to find the last couple of fragments here. Okay, a few more creatures coming. I think everyone's them, yeah. I think everyone's got one. Okay, here we go. We've got some brutes. Oh, boy. So these brutes are... Okay, yeah. And they're these legendaries, guys. so lots of hit points. Yeah. Uh, I will shoot whichever one you shoot. Okay, this one in the front. Yeah, legendary ash oh. brute. So his weak point <laughs> is in his head, so it's uh -huh. a good kind of spot to try to hit if we can. Yep. Oh, I need a, need a health pack. Run. <laughs> yeah, these guys hit pretty hard. They and I really, think we're on yeah. fire. I don't know, uh, Camden, can you I'm use your fire. cleanse on the <laughs> interceptor, please? I think you just used it. So we put Camden on his support ability will cleanse status effects. Because oh, nice. there's often a lot of things that cause fire and then you can't fly and not flying is kind of annoying. Uh, so mm -hmm. he can clear that for us. It's actually kind of interesting to me because as a quest designer, while I've been playing the game, a lot of the time I'm testing my quests and I'll play solo more often than I'll play in a group. So I haven't yeah. necessarily seen all the abilities that the Interceptor <laughs> and the other classes have. Yeah, it's a whole new thing to play in a full group. It makes a really, it really big does. difference, yeah. I think. It's a lot more fun. There's a lot more combos. There's a lot more group interplay options. Uh -huh. uh, so like these brutes as well, if you hover, they'll shoot fire at you to like prevent you from kind of trying to just hover above them. So I don't know if we have a, a can that got cleansed again, I think. I oh, know it's not fire. It's okay. Very on cooldown cool. still. <laughs> I have a flamethrower. Oh, you have so a flamethrower. Nice. Okay. Brutes can be on fire for a while. Did we get them all? Yeah, uh, there's one more who just came through. Oh, oh yeah, we still, someone's still yeah, carrying a fragment thing. and it needs to put it down. Uh, that would be me picking. again. <laughs> <laughs> ben, <laughs> you gotta stop you picking them up. Out. I know, I know, what a shocking <laughs> move, right? That's fine. You know, Mike Gamble mentioned something. He said that often you actually fly out here so that you're physically on the same site. Uh, but you didn't do that this week. Is that to do with the fact that it was minus 7 Fahrenheit or minus <laughs> 22 Celsius for those uh, outside the I would the say I'm a massive fan <laughs> of the cold of Edmonton. Uh, that's for certain. I looked at the weather this morning. I thought, maybe I should fly to Austin. That would be okay, right? You should have come to Austin. Yeah. Now, <laughs> we might have hit a snare here. I don't see the next quest step. Oh, that's weird. So... Did we hmm. bug something out, do we think? That is possible. This is a build that still has a couple bugs. Right, um, so that's cool. So what we'll do is, um, if you guys controlling the cameras can swap back to uh, my head, I will uh -huh. end this. And maybe what we'll just do is see if we can restart again. And then for now, why don't we go ahead and take some questions? Uh, I'm going to end the expedition. If that doesn't end that for everyone, could you guys all just exit out, get back to Fort Tarsus? Uh, I'll send some invites out and we might go again. All right, so that was kind of, we did two out of the three steps of that legendary contract though. Um, as you can see, a lot of the creatures work tougher. Like we saw legendary variants, a lot more hit points, a lot more coordination required. Um, we got a lot of cool loot. I'm actually looking at my end of expedition screen now. I don't want to share it with you, but um, let's see what I got if it was anything cool. I definitely got some epics and I think if you, yeah, so I got like just in that amount of time, I got uh, three epics, uh, three rares, and then a couple of uh, commons. So not a bad little haul. Uh, so while we get reset up, uh, we'll take some questions. So one of the thing chat was noticing was that your javelin was cooled the whole time was it the rain that was affecting that yeah can can chat hear you or do i need to repeat the oh, question chat can hear me oh awesome well, look at this <laughs> jesse all the powers uh yeah it was raining so you know uh, we wanted to have some impact of the environment to how gameplay functions so one of those things is that um when it's raining you'll get uh some extended flight time so there's various levels of cooling you know like flying through a waterfall kind of wipes out all of your heat uh, and then like skimming the water or some rain will just like extend the amount of uh, heat capacity you have. So your heat meter will fill up slower. Um, I don't think we want to show Fort Tarsus if we can go back to my, oh, we still on my head? Okay, that's fine. Uh, cool. So I will get us ready to go again. Uh, what other questions do we have, Jesse? Oh, did, did, did we explain the flight ceiling enough? So when Emily was talking through how contracts work, the question was, hey, can you fly to the top and show us what that looks like? So uh, can you guys ready up, please? 
Uh, so basically what happens is uh, there's turbulence is kind of the ceiling. So as you fly high, there's these really strong winds that will just push you back to the ground. And so you'll burn your heat trying to go up and then eventually you'll overheat and kind of crash land. And that's just our way of, you know, controlling the playable space, which I think is a pretty cool solution the team came up with. So another question we've got, uh, I think we might have answered this one before, but what happens if you don't pick up loot? Yep, uh, so Talisker, can you hit ready? I think. Uh, yeah, so we have some systems for this. We've explained it a couple times on social media, but basically, if you don't pick up a masterwork or legendary item, we'll mail it to you. But everything else you basically lose if you don't pick up. And so the reason for that is, if we just sent everything to you, you would never bother looking for loot and picking it up. And you know, discovering that loot and finding that loot is an important part of the game. So we really want to encourage people to after you know completing a mission or completing an encounter to like look around pick up the loot as you saw when we were playing i was like running towards little blue and purple things all the time uh they're pretty easy to see in the game now we've made a lot of iterations since like uh, ea play for example uh so it's pretty easy to pick them up but we want that to be a conscious thing that you're like this game is about collecting loot we want you to consciously go and pick it up uh, but give you a little bit of protection for super rare stuff so that so that you don't lose that on, on that uh, so that's how loot works so, uh, you guys can uh, swap back to, uh, see what I can do. yeah, that thing, us, <laughs> I was going to say. All right, so I got another uh, mm -hmm. thing people are asking a lot about are emotes. Um, so I think these I guys think got some good, good ones equipped here, actually, if we want to. So let's see. Okay, so Nighthawk, uh, Emily's doing the air guitar. Uh, let's do that one more time, maybe. Camden is waving. It's a little boring, Camden. I feel like you're better than that. Uh, we've got flares. What do we got on Talisker? A little point? Ooh. I don't know if you're saying, like, let's go that way, or if you're, you're saying, I'm going to come get you. That's fine. Uh, so yeah, we've got some pretty cool emotes there. Um, I think we should talk about your appearance, Emily, both uh, in real life and in game. Uh, I hope you feels like there's some themes going here. <laughs> I hope you appreciate that I'm matching. This is a lot of work, <laughs> do, a lot of coordination. So uh, orange is my favorite color, and I just love the customization options. <laughs> so you will usually see me looking like uh, something very garish. <laughs> and the Colossus is such a big canvas to paint on, too. It's, it's so <laughs> much true. area. It's great. So yeah. All right. Hey, let's, let's go towards this first objective again. Um, and let's see, maybe we have something different uh, this time around. Last yep. thing on emotes, Ben. Yep. People are really asking this a lot. Are we going to add a dab emote? <laughs> uh, sure. <laughs> you dab all day. Uh, I, we might have we might have had one we've captured already. I can't remember if we've, you know, you, you capture it uh, or create it, and then we have to process it and get it in game. So I forget if we have one in game or if we've just got one in the pipeline that will come uh, eventually. Um, people did want to see the mouse and keyboard settings, so what we might do is just get through this encounter, uh, and then kind of show that. I broke the cardinal rule of flying, which is if you overheat, you get penalized and have to wait a bunch. So maybe because I reset this, we have the same, the same encounter again. Oh, yeah. It thought that we failed the mission, so you're just restarting the mission, I think. Right, right. That makes sense. Yep, there's our buddy again. All right. Well, let's let's get these fragments in fast this time, hey? All right. Where is the... Here it is. Uh-oh. This is a bit brave. <laughs> I don't know if we've talked much about the scorpions, but you may be able to see that there are three different types of them and they each have slightly different behaviors. So that makes them kind of interesting. There's one that will blow up in your face, which is my least favorite type. <laughs> yeah, the, um, the worker will like, um, has the sack. He'll explode with a sack just like that when he gets to you. So you actually don't have to shoot it if you don't want. You can try to bait it into exploding on top of its friends and then it will do damage to its friends as well. So there's a little, uh, some advanced options of play there as well. Oh, yeah, and it leaves you covered in green slime. <laughs> We've also got some uh, lightning falling down from this rainstorm, which is not ideal. 
Oh. Not perfect. No, lightning can zap you out of the sky, can't it? Yep. Right, I'm going to get rid of these, uh, all the rest of the arachnids, the Sculpidons, sorry, and then if you guys want to focus on the Ursix for a bit. All right, I'm going to use my ultimate. Boom. Oh, nice. Please do that. That's amazing. Ah, oh, damn it. And take him down that much. He's legendary. He's pretty tough, but I took him down about a quarter. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. I'll come over with my uh, support field in a second. These Sculpidons are still coming, so that's yep. not ideal. Might just bait them <laughs> into you guys so we can kind of AOE them a bit. Yeah, put this field down for us so we can get that 20% bonus weapon damage. Oh, didn't dodge like a chump, and I'm down. Dope. Now I get made fun of by however many thousands of people are watching. Ah, I'm going down too. <laughs> no, no, I'm running away. All right, someone needs to hit me up with a repair, please. Uh -huh. Yeah, sorry, I was going, but I almost died too. I'm on Who fire. Got? Who's going to be okay. that hero? We can yeah. cue the You Can Be My Hero Baby music, please. All right, here we go. Looks like Camden's <laughs> got me. Maybe a little wind wall as well. Good stuff, guys. Thank you. So again, his weak spot is the head, but it's kind of a trade-off. If you get in front, you're kind of susceptible to all of his other attacks. Mm. Uh, so... Like just that, I got hit by the rocks. Yeah. One thing I didn't call out when we were talking about the contracts is uh, you'll actually notice the difficulty in each beat uh, escalates. So contracts are typically three tasks in a row, uh, but each one should feel a little more intense than the last. So <laughs> this is the easiest <laughs> one. Starting with an Essex? <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Not ideal. It is a legendary contract. Like, so we started with the easiest one then, and you still yeah. died. It's like, uh, uh, yeah. oh. Ah, awkward. Ah, crap, I got right, so this is good. Time. Camden's kind of keep entertained. We got the wind wall up, which protected us from those rocks, which is great. Now it's gone. Okay. We got to have to use dodge. Let's see if I, I can stick a grenade players. in the head there. Looks a bit risky. Let's try a double shotgunning him. Nice flamethrower. Got my spark beam on him as well. Okay, now he's on fire. That's great. Taking oh, that extra dot damage. Um, it's I fine. Might have just died. Uh, can Darren get you there? That's, that's a little brave. Did you guys both Don't. go down? I think this so. <laughs> we died together. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna bait him, Camden. If you can pick him up, please. <laughs> Yay! Thank you. Oh, that was embarrassing. Oh, I got knocked out of the sky. I'm gonna come give you guys a little weapon buff. Hey Ben, what uh, what yeah. difficulty are you guys playing on? So we are. Oh no 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 no. Uh, we are playing. Oh my gosh, really? I'm down. Um, we are playing on hard difficulty, Jesse. Oh yes. Oh yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for. <laughs> so this is a little. It's a little. T I mean, if you play really well, yeah. it's kind of fine. But if you make yeah. mistakes, you certainly get punished. Yeah. So this L6 yeah. is pretty low now. I think we can just finish him <laughs> off real quick. I'm, I'm not. Right. And the lightning strikes really aren't <laughs> kind of helping this whole problem. Yeah, because they'll uh, incapacitate us if they hit us, and uh, they're pretty nasty. So we got Talisker back up again. Is everyone up? Yeah. So one thing I forget if we had this last stream, but you can see in the top left of over there we have a party uh, widget now which we didn't have before which is great so you can see the direction uh, your teammates are relative to you so if i run ahead i can see talisker nighthawk cannon behind me uh, and and the uh, kind of arc it shows gives an indication of distance um, as well as you can see their shield and health so that's really great now it's more obvious if people go down um, you know if someone's low health and they need a wind wall or something like that you can kind of look at a glance all right, so we're going to show keyboard and mouse settings real quick. Uh, controls, keyboard and mouse. Okay, so a couple of sensitivity options. So uh, I play pretty low sensitivity in most games, so like 800 DPI, like but, but lower. So for me, I put, so again, my mouse is 800 DPI for the nerds out there, um, which I am one of. 
Uh, so I play 12%. Uh, and for me, I like my aimed and zoom to be consistent. I like that feel to feel the same. So, uh, but you do have those two toggles there. Um, any kind of vertical aim sensitivity modifier you want. So, uh, you know, we, we make it uh, the same by default, but if you're used to kind of any kind of console sensitivity stuff, you can change it. I think most people leave that here. Um, so for me, I like aiming low sensitivity, but I really like flight and swimming to be higher sensitivity. To me, that feels more like a, a um, thumbstick on a controller. And so I put mine up to 80%. And then you can see here, I won't go into all these now because it will take a lot of time, um, but we have a bunch of different sensitivity options, uh, including precision and, and response time, which kind of, there's a little description about what these things mean as well. But uh, I think what that means is for, I think a lot of PC players kind of get used to their sensitivities. And so um, when you're doing that, you can really like dial this in to play the way that you want it to. So that's sensitivity. And then of course, uh, for uh, PC and keyboard and mouse, you can do uh, key bindings for remap. So these are our default ones. I've done a couple extra. So for me, I like to have hover on mouse five as well as C. And then I use melee on mouse four instead of V. I just find V is tricky for me, but using my thumb button for melee is, is uh, easy. So yeah, that's how the PC controls work. Hopefully we tick that box. So let's go to the next one. And then I think after we do this uh, beat of the contract, we had a few more questions for you, Emily, just around contracts and, and kind of how they work. Yeah, absolutely. So it looks like we have to investigate a missing arcanist. So this oh. is different than the second okay. one we had last yeah, time, this right? Is. So, okay. I'm pretty sure it is. I don't remember wolves before. Yeah, we were silencing last time. Yeah, we've got another relic, but this is different. Look at all this different. loot. Look at all this loot. I'm on it today. Yeah, so we have an Arcanist researcher. Must be one of Matthias's friends who needs protecting. Uh, do we need to... Okay, we have to get the predators first. Uh, let's see. Okay. Oh, he's in a cage. Alright, we're good. Failing research device. Okay, that sounds exciting. Let's go out. Yeah, maybe. I went the wrong way, kind of. I got caught up exploring oh. uh, the depths under the water. <laughs> Actually, I think I got lost too. <laughs> maybe I could find some treasure. I don't know. <laughs> well, there's treasure all over the world. Uh, even when you're out in free play, you'll occasionally come across a chest. Uh, it's slightly embarrassing, but even when I'm doing my quests and I'm testing them on a local server where I cannot actually pick up any loot, <laughs> I still cannot help clicking on those chests because they're glowing and they look exciting. Uh, I hate to break it to you guys, we have a time. <laughs> so... Oh no. Uh, okay, tight search. Camden, I hope you have your uh, cleanse fire uh, buttons ready, uh, please. I'm gonna die. We'll be fine, we'll be fine, we'll be fine. Uh, so the yeah. whole thing with the titan is... Okay, hold on, what are we gonna do? We gotta get the three devices. Okay, I'm gonna go with Camden over here. Do you have this one? Oh. Can you cleanse fire? I don't know if you did already. I wanna fly. Okay. So okay. Titans have this huge chest attack that you really gotta stay out of the beam, but they also put out rings of fire. And I believe it's possible to jump over the rings if you're agile. Yeah. It's basically uh, a jumping puzzle where you yeah. can, uh, uh oh, it's bad for me. Uh, but I'm not agile, uh, and I'm on fire now. <laughs> uh, okay, we have two titans, so that's a thing. Uh, let's take the one with Nighthawk first, if we can. Uh, <laughs> this is going to be really interesting. I'm frozen, unfortunate I'm news. Okay, so let's get uh, where Camden is first. Okay. I think, I think one at a time is probably best, unless you guys have a different idea. I hope that sounds good to me. I'm going to... Try my ultimate again, see if so the whole Yeah, yep. oh, nice. Because the whole thing with the Titan is, the when uh, parts of his arms glow, they're the weak points. And if you do enough damage to the weak points, you can interrupt what he's doing. So if he's casting like a, 
you know, any of his attacks like this, if we were to hit his arms with enough damage, he would kind of stop, and then we could be more offensive. Right. Uh, he'll also spawn those, you see those explosions behind us just there? So you've really got to time the dodges when you see it in the corner of your eye. Uh, and then the rings of fire, you've got to dodge, and then he spawns uh, little elements, elementals as well. Hey, Ben, a uh, question from everyone. Are there, like, different sizes of Titan? Yeah, so there, there are small Titans, uh, and there are big Titans, and then there, of the big Titans, there are, like, you know, like, elite and legendary versions. Uh, so this is an elite lesser. So this yeah. is one of the, is this one of the higher ones? Oh, oh, the more powerful Oops. ones? Well, he's elite, so he's pretty nasty, but lesser does imply there are bigger ones we're going to meet, which yeah. I'm not uh, I'm too much of a fan of. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I can even yeah, see for all of the fire that I'm on. Okay, I'm putting right. my field down, but like right on his face, which is borderline it's crazy. <laughs> I need a health pack. Oh, there's one over there. So you can see I'm trying to time most of my shots on his ability casts and then like Ouch. reload in between uh, so that I'm ready again for his next cast. I think one of the nastiest things about him is if his fire ring hits you, then you're on fire, which overheats you, which means you can't fly to miss <laughs> yeah, the next one. Right. They're not for the faint-hearted. These are... No. <laughs> are there three? Okay. Uh, yeah, That's I fine. think we just got another one. <laughs> All right. Uh... See, remember what I said about difficulty escalating? <laughs> Did I mention? <laughs> oh, I got hit by that. Yeah, I am, and... I am now on fire, and I just keep getting hit. Let's <laughs> get I more <laughs> So kind of the dance is push on those abilities. Probably need to keep this other one in my line of sight because I keep getting hit by its abilities as well. So I'm kind of failing a little bit on these dodges for the ones that come behind me. For those watching, you can see you've really got to... It's kind of like shoot, 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 dodge, you know, like this. Reload, shoot, shoot, shoot. But I dodged into someone else's, so... The other kind of tactic here is if you clump up, you get hit by all the attacks. So we've kind of got a maybe triangle formation or square formation around him is a little better because yeah. then we don't get hit by everyone's everything. We just kind of have to deal with our own stuff. Oh, ouch. Okay, see, I dodged that one that time, I think. Nice. Okay, where are we at on alt status? Um, if anyone I'm has awful. one, I feel like it would be... Oh, man, <laughs> a I good like time. It. I feel like it would, be, uh, <laughs> it would be probably worth it. It's probably worth it. So there's lots of health goblets on him. I see a few of us are low. We want to, like... It's kind of that risk, like, in between this cast. Maybe I can pick up a couple of health things and ammo, so... You know, these creatures are kind of longer fights, and so at certain times, they'll still drop armor and health so that for longer fights, you know, you kind of can resupply if you need to. Nighthawk down. Oh, 
That's what I'm talking about. Look at that. Masterwork item. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, alright. I see Emily back, but I can't hear her. It's okay, we'll keep going. Um, do we have any other questions, Jesse? Uh, we can answer as we try to get defeat this final one. So let's see what we've uh, what we've got on chat here. So what happens if if everyone dies here and you all go down? Yep. So um, if you go down, uh, a player can uh, repair you. Um, that's like an unlimited timer. Uh, unless everybody goes down. So if everybody goes down, it's a party wipe. And then in the case of a uh, legendary contract like this, we would start at our last checkpoint. So we would be at the beginning of this encounter and we'd have to defeat all of these Titans again, basically. To get a little reload there. Oh, nice, her ultimate's going off. So Emily's back in game, we just can't quite hear her, so that's okay. We have her skills, uh, just not uh, question answering abilities. Uh, any other questions, Jesse, that you can see? I'm gonna try to get up close here. It's sketchy. I see we're being asked about uh, PC settings a lot of like what recommended specs are for for PC. I believe we released that, didn't we, Ben? Yeah, we did. I don't have all the info in my head for that, but certainly if you look it up on our official website, I'm pretty sure it is all there. Okay, so I managed <laughs> I dropped right into the fire. Yeah, getting this dance right takes a little bit of practice. All right, if we have any alts left, it would be great to finish this guy off. Come on, cost. There we go. There we go. Good stuff, team. Oh. Same thing, got greedy for that loot too early, like I do every single time. All right, so I think we might show this um, end of expedition screen a little bit of it. I think that's okay, right? Mainly because I want to show my, I just want to show the uh, masterwork reveal because I want to know what I got. And let's do that, all right, that sounds good. All right, but why don't we get a couple more questions? We're probably almost out of time. I got kind of carried away in the excitement there. Uh, I'm going to skip a few things here. Do I want to? Hold on. Yeah, I'll skip a couple of details because we should really talk about all this in a different setting. But let's see. Oh, look at this. All right, Venom Dart's pretty good. Three dots. Nice, okay. So that's some pretty big shotgun, 20% damage and 20% ammo. So, okay, my shotgun usage would be amazing now. Uh, and then the Venom Darts uh, debuffs with poison or acid damage rather, which uh, makes enemies take more damage as well, which is kind of cool. So I got a bunch of cool stuff. Venom Darts, got a Seeker Missile. I got lots, we got lots of loot. Like legendary contracts are no joke. What do we get here? Assault rifle, sniper rifle, Colossus component, trying to convince me to go play something different. It's very savvy. Uh, assault rifle, sniper rifle, LMG, nice. And a barrage heavy pistol, which probably isn't as good as the one that I already have on. This is a high rate of fire one. All right, so we might swap off the game back to my head, I guess, um, so that I can go through the rest of the UIs that I think we're not going to show right now. Thank you. Alrighty, so, whew, okay, so what did we go through? Uh, we looked at a ranger uh, with spark beam, sticky grenade, 
uh, heavy pistol, uh, the double shot shotgun, uh, which is super powerful, but like pretty low clip because you use two shells per. Um, we did keyboard and mouse controls, so you could see how keyboard and mouse works. Um, I think flight feels really good now on the mouse. It didn't earlier. I think it's feeling pretty good. Um, controller might take the edge by a tiny bit in, in that feel, but then I think you get the extra precision of a mouse for aiming, so it's kind of a pretty solid trade-off there. Uh, we looked at how those settings worked. Um, Emily was kind enough to come on. Unfortunately, we lost her just at the end, but uh, she explained like uh, who the agents are and kind of uh, kind of the story behind them and, and how they were created and, and the different things they kind of focus on uh, and explained contracts of the things you do for agents to kind of earn their favor. Um, we did a legendary contract, uh, which is kind of a three-stage uh, uh, mission. Uh, that is different every time, so you don't really know what you're going to do. Even you saw we did it uh, twice there, and we had a different experience uh, both times, uh, which is really cool. Uh, we played on hard difficulties, so um, we were pretty geared, and we still had a tough time. Like I would say we're geared to the tail end of what a legendary contract on hard should be, and we still went down a bunch, um, but I guess that's where you make fun of us for being uh, low skill devs. Um, what else? Did we do anything else, Jesse? Oh, we showed the flight ceiling. That was kind of fun. Um, yeah, so that's everything we showed. I think we could do, if you have questions, Jesse, a couple more questions. Otherwise, maybe we should wrap this, this one up. Yeah, there are just a couple. One question I saw for, for keyboard and mouse controls. Can you invert your uh, Y axis? On keyboard and mouse? I, that's what they asked. Uh, no. I don't think so. Uh, hold on. You can't see this. I'll go look. No, but is that is that a thing? Does anyone I, I, in the history of all time do that? No, no, it's not a thing. You can invert for um, controller. Absolutely. Well, you know what? What happens if I invert this? Let's see. Does this work? No. Yeah, it's just for controller. So no, you cannot. But is that a thing? I guess if that's a big enough thing, we could look to add it later. Uh, last thing, Ben, what mm -hmm. would your best advice be for people who are going to be going into the uh, VIP demo next week? Oh, strap in and get ready. Uh, no, I think um, the whole point of this is we want people to be able to play like a full cross section of the game. And so, you know, if you've pre ordered, I would go in there, I would find some forums, I would make some friends, you know, start getting ready for, for the people you want to group up and play with when the game launches. Uh, I would uh, try a couple of the javelins out, you know, play around with the, the weapons and abilities, see what your favorite is so that on day one, you can kind of like optimize and, and get ready to play. Uh, but most of all, just have fun. Um, and then, you know, if, if uh, you want to invite some friends, there'll be a way to give out some codes to invite a couple of friends in. So if you like the game, but, you know, your friends haven't picked it up yet, like invite them in and, and they can play. Um, and uh, yeah, I, otherwise, come and have fun. We've, we've got some really cool things. That, that demo is really, really fun. Um, I know uh, Mike has worked really hard with the team on getting that ready, and, and they've done an amazing job. We, we played it the other day, and it was super fun. It's a great kind of section of the game to play. Uh, and yeah, just, just have fun. All right, so um, we might wrap it up there. Um, if there are more questions, uh, please feel free to follow us on Twitter. Uh, I'm at Ben Erbo. Um, Emily is at Pentapod, uh, cause she can't say that herself. Uh, feel free to follow us. So I'll ask some questions. Uh, we check Reddit as well. So feel free to stop by Reddit and, and post any questions you have. And between all of us out there, uh, trying to talk, we'll, we'll do our best to get back to you. Um, otherwise, uh, thanks again to all the amazing developers who are out there working hard while we're on here doing a fun stream, showing off this incredible work. Uh, and finally, thanks again to all of our fans and 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 the amazing community that's been so positive and and awesome to work with for tuning in again and uh outside of that we'll uh leave you with a trailer and then we'll see you next time thanks bye welcome to the anthem gameplay series in this first video we'll take a look at story progression and customization the world of Anthem is a chaotic and ever-changing world, abandoned by the Shaper Gods. Humanity survives either in fortified cities or with the use of Javelin exosuits. 
Javelins are key to your survival by giving you superhuman abilities. Fly, swim, fight, and explore anywhere within the world. That's where you and your friends come in. Part explorer, protector, and adventurer. You are an elite group of pilots called freelancers that are sworn to protect humanity and uncover the mysteries of the world. In the world, the dangers all stem from one mysterious power. The anthem of creation is everything. To control it is everything. Uh, okay, but what could he even do with it? What could he do with the power of life and death, creation and destruction? He would be a god. Imagine all the good that we could do. We decide what's best for the world the power of pure creation at our fingertips. Your story begins in the middle of this conflict. It will be up to you to head out on missions, silence Schaefer ruins, confront enemy factions, and most importantly, ensure that the Dominion do not get their hands on the Anthem of Creation. Before you head out on these missions, you need to prepare your Javelin. Unlock four base Javelin suits and then build any number of loadouts to customize them for different play styles. The Interceptor is built for speed, lightning fast and incredibly agile to get in and out of harm's way. The Ranger is built for precision, highly versatile and ready to unleash firepower. The Colossus is built to deal destruction. What it lacks in agility, it makes up for in brute strength and defensive combat power. The Storm is built for extraordinary elemental attacks, devastating power and light armor. No matter which javelin you choose, your loadout can be customized and augmented to match your gameplay style. Your javelin ability has everything to do with the gear you use. Your gear score is the indication of how powerful your javelin is. Each javelin has the following slots. Two for offensive gear, one for support gear, two weapons, six components, and one ultimate power that is unique to each javelin type. In this case, we have four loadouts ready to go for the Ranger. Each one I've set up for different play styles. Let's have a look at my team support specialist. We are using the Venom Darts and a Frost Grenade for offensive gear. This will be great for applying ice and acid status and for setting up combos. For support gear, we are using the Bulwark Point, which places a spherical shield in the battle. For weapons, we have a Hammerhead Assault Rifle and the semi-auto sniper rifle. One will give medium range damage, while the other allows for fantastic long range damage. For my six components, I have a selection of items that will help keep my weapons at maximum performance. Before you head out, you have a choice on a number of objectives and ways to play. Continue your critical story mission, pick up quests from people in the fort, including your crew, enter one of the formidable strongholds or explore the open world in free play. Let's start by checking in with Halleck and continue with one of our story missions. It's just us in the Dominion now. Good. It's a freelancer job. Always has been. Ready, Javelin One? Ready when you are. We've got your back. You go there and you kick some ass. In this first fight, we are going up against the Dominion Fury. The Fury. The Dominion don't play games. Be careful. The Fury hits incredibly hard and will regenerate itself. It will be important to keep moving and use cover or the bulwark point. Two things to remember. Protect yourself and time your attacks to do maximum damage in bursts. The Storm is set up for maximum damage using elemental attacks like Lightning Strike and Flaming Orb. Its quickening field will reduce cooldowns within its perimeter allowing everyone to use their offensive powers more often. Timing your ultimate attacks with your team will ensure enemies like the Fury won't have a chance to regenerate. There, you got them. You survived the Fury. You best head back to the fort. I'll let Tassin know we need to talk. At the end of each mission, head back to the fort. Collect your loot, customize your javelin, Pick a new suit and head out for more. This time, let's enter free play. In free play, the map is open to you to explore the way you want, head in any direction, and discover endless activities and receive missions along the way. Run into other players on the map 
or call in a friend when you need an extra set of weapons to take down the deadliest creatures the world has to offer. Here we see the Colossus and Interceptor are opposites in almost every way, making them a great pair in battle. The Colossus is built to be in the middle of the fight, with its heavy weapons and durable shield. Taunting enemies with battle cry will keep enemies focused on it. This will allow the Interceptor to charge in and out of the fight, inflicting its melee damage without being attacked. Powers like Wraith Strike will send out a shadow version of the Interceptor, or use the target beacon to mark an enemy, then charge in with the spark dash to finish it off. In Anthem, build your ultimate arsenal of javelins. Head out into the world and unleash your power. Stay tuned for the next installment that shows you the expanding shared world of Anthem and its massive endgame, including a look at our strongholds.